Over the next half hour, you will be introduced to one of the world's most remarkable artists and musicians of our time. Internationally renowned flautist and recording artist, Bettina Clemen, has thrilled audiences in over 85 countries with her innovative solo shows, performing in some of the world's greatest halls and venues, like the Lincoln Center in New York City and the Royal Albert Hall in London. Her unique concerts combine many different styles of music, ranging from pop to light jazz to classical, with stunning videos of concerts for over 50 different species of animals. Her films take you to places like Petra Jordan, China, Japan, South America, Alaska, Sri Lanka, Russia, and many other exotic sites from around the world. After gaining her master's degree of music at the Academy of Music in Munich, Bavarian-born Bettina made her early soloist career with many prestigious orchestras of the world. Later, Bettina moved to the USA and toured for Columbia Artist, playing over 300 concerts in America. While recording her 12 best-selling CDs and DVDs, and writing her book. She also was one of the first Western musicians ever to be invited by the Chinese government to perform and teach in Shanghai and Beijing. Currently, Bettina performs seven months out of the year worldwide. When not touring, you will find Bettina at home on her 31-acre ranch in Missouri with her horses, Angelo and Amadeus, her donkey, Dominique, her pot belly pig, Harry Trotter, and her Pyrenean mountain dog, Orbit, and her cat, Alpha. Prepare yourself to embark on the wings of music into a moving adventure with the sights and sounds of a love song for a planet. Hi, I am Bettina, and I want to extend a very warm welcome to you and an invitation to join me on a journey around the world. We will travel on the wings of great music to some exotic and beautiful places on Earth. And along the way, we will meet some amazing animals, children and people. And as you will see, they all respond to the universal language of music. Right now, we are in Alpha Meadows, my home in the Ozarks which is also home to my horses, Angelo and Amadeus, my dogs, Orbit and Ninja, my donkey, Dominique, and my cat, Alpha, who you see right here with me. From this place, I travel out into the world with my concert tours for six to seven months a year. And to here, I love to return for some rest and to prepare my next tours. From my early childhood on in Bavaria, I've always felt that nature and animals have been nourishing my life energies. And I also experienced in my career as a solo flutist how music can be a bridge, not only between people, but also between species. And that music can create a greater understanding, connection and peace. I also have enjoyed bringing my music into the daily lives of people, whether it's on travels or at home. And that is what I want to share with you now. So come with me around the world as we travel on the wings of music to far away places and meet some amazing companions and friends along the way.
There are so many beautiful places on our planet. Let me invite you to travel with me to Canada and Iceland and experience the sights and the sounds of some of the most magnificent waterfalls I visited on my concert tours. One of my most memorable and unusual performances over the years was in a river in Sri Lanka at an elephant orphanage where I played my flutes for 80 elephants. They responded with splashing, swaying and trumpeting. Let me introduce to you the magnificent elephants of Sri Lanka.
One of my most favorite places on earth is the rose-colored ruined city of Petra in the Jordanian desert. Cast out of a rock by the Nabataeans about 2,000 years ago, Petra was an important trading city on the Silk Road. Here, the merchants who brought the frankincense, the silks, the spices, and the precious stones from the Far East to the Roman world traded, and then they found shelter for themselves and their animals. In the year 2000, I was very fortunate to film and to play my flutes among these ruins. And that has given me this opportunity now to share this undescribable place with all of you. For the music for Petra, I chose my wooden flutes, the Native American, Tibetan and Peruvian flutes, because these more breathy and earthy sounds blend so well with the earthy tones of Petra's colors. Come with me now as we ride into Petra on a camel called Lawrence towards the Treasury Building, which was also the backdrop for the film Raiders of the Lost Ark. And then onto the amphitheater and the tribunal where we meet the Bedouin families and their children and animals. Ethnic music of the planet always expresses the uniqueness of all of our different cultures. And yet, it also has a common element of earthiness and simplicity in it. The wooden, more breathy sounds of my Native American flutes and drums blend well with the serene beauty of the ancient ruins of the rose-colored city of Petra in Jordan, which is a place one simply cannot describe with words. I have felt a kinship with nature, animals, and especially with horses. In my childhood in Bavaria, we had Icelandic ponies, and they were my best friends and companions. 
What a joy it was to visit these gentle and spirited horses in their native country and to serenade them. And how they responded. Please welcome the Dean Clement. Thank you. 
much. And it's such a joy to see so many of you this morning. And you know, we wanted to start with this piece of which I always thought it was called the Wilhelm Tell Overture. But then 20 years ago, I moved to America and I thought it's really called the Lone Ranger. <laughs> so you always learn something new, right? Living in Brazil in a small house by the rainforest, I experienced the amazing sounds, sights, and fragrances of the jungle almost daily. It inspired my compositions and the music for this next piece. I invite you now to walk with me through the rainforests of Costa Rica and to visit with many of the natural flora and fauna and arrive at a beautiful amphitheater for more of a love song for a planet. Chinese government 
to play and to teach in Beijing and Shanghai. And you can you can imagine my Chinese is very poor and it has a Bavarian accent in it. <laughs> so they sent me this interpreter and I, I got my hopes up. He spoke five languages. He spoke fluently Chinese, Russian, Romanian, Hungarian, and Bulgarian. None of which I speak. I speak <laughs> others, but they didn't match. So we had only music and humor to, to communicate. And also, they were very, very concerned that they wouldn't find me at the airport. So the man who picked me up stood there with a huge photo of me for hours. <laughs> and I thought about it later. It was kind of strange because it's not that difficult to recognize me among 10,000 Chinese people. <laughs> but I received many gifts in China, among those this beautiful, simple bamboo flute. And I would like to now ask you if I could have three volunteers that could play some of my Chinese instruments. Here they are. Great. Thanks so much for coming up. What is your name? Kristen. Kristen. Nice to meet you. What is your name? Also Kristen. <laughs> so you can say Kristen one and Kristen two. And what is your name? Cass. Great to see you, Cass. So one of you would play this. Who would like to play this? Will this one hit it? Now try it. A little harder. Wow, that was good. Excellent. And then Tristan, number one, can play the Chinese wall. You hold it like this and you go. All right? Try it. Yeah, very good. In the southern hemisphere of our planet, we find the curious penguins. They always came to my concerts formally dressed in black tie and took in every note with great interest. 
The penguins from South Africa, Argentina and Chile greet you here with a famous waltz. I went on a concert tour to Asia that included a visit to Vietnam. I had been in Vietnam several times before and I was always moved by the warmth and the friendliness of the Vietnamese people. This time I was able to spend a whole week in Ho Chi Minh City and I was overwhelmed by the sincerity and the warmth and the hospitality of the Vietnamese. I wanted to include this piece in my film as a gesture of gratitude to Vietnam for the wonderful days I spent there and also my tribute to the Vietnamese people to hope for a more cooperative future and a new beginning. I set sail on a beautiful ship called the Pacific Venus from Yokohama, Japan. And after seven days at sea, we finally reached the shores of Vietnam and entered the Mekong River on our way to Ho Chi Minh City, formerly known as Saigon. It was early February and the time of Vietnamese New Year and almost everyone seemed to be out on the streets. Thousands of families with all their children drove around all evening on their motorbikes and many balloons went up in the air. In the parks, parents took photos with their children that were very nicely dressed. And the exuberant spirit of celebration and the warm smiles and goodwill of the Vietnamese people touched everyone. My bare backpack connected with many of the children and the families then invited me to take group photos with them. The next day, I visited the Buddhist temples. First was the famous Tien Han Pagoda, which is known to most tourists. Later that day, I discovered a small temple in a side street. I was the only visitor, and inside there was a deep silence. When I played my wooden flutes, 
The music seemed to flow naturally out of the silence. The next day, when I came back, there was a monk there chanting with a wood block and the Tibetan bowl. He came over to me and we communicated with just a few words. I played for him and then suddenly he went to the back of the altar and brought me some wonderful gifts. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, for me? Oh, for you. Thank you so much. Um, friends. Yes? Uh, I, uh, I, uh, I don't, uh, name is... What is this name? Mango? Mango, mango. 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 That's my favorite food. Oh. Two people from different cultures had become friends with hardly any words. That night, I went to a show of local Vietnamese music. The energy, the passion and enthusiasm of these musicians ignited everyone. Last day in Vietnam, I received an invitation from the Conservatory of Music. I was to teach a class for the woodwind players, and it became a true cross-cultural and very joyful meeting. who had never before played the blues, learned how to play a bass line. We said goodbye, and then we took one last photo. Before taking off to the airport on my last day, I still had time to visit some stores and connect with the wonderful Vietnamese people. and to have lunch with my newly found friend, the beautiful flute professor Ha. She summed up so well how I feel about music being a bridge between people and all life. Music can actually bring people together from the most different kind of cultures and unite us instead of separating us, right? Music can make people in peace. Yes, great. Peace and harmony. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Vietnam. I do believe that the children of the planet really want to connect. 
with us, with each other, they don't feel so much these differences that we sometimes feel there are, you know, they just want to connect. And I have learned some most important things from children. So this next number is dedicated to the children of the planet and you will find them in, in Africa, Asia, Europe, America, everywhere. And um, it's with the music of the Hungarian dance number five by Brahms. Here are the children of the planet. It has been such a joy to travel with all of you around the planet. And here we are again on my farm in the Ozarks with Angelo and Amadeus. I'm so lucky I get to live with them. And I'm also so fortunate to travel around the world with my music. We live in very challenging times. And it seems at times that the news is only of war, violence and disaster. And I simply wanted to counterbalance that with my film and show that at the same time, there's also a lot of wonder happening on this planet. I'm not suggesting that we close our eyes to the injustices and the violent things that happen on the planet. But I do believe that if we want to create a better life and a better world, we have to create a vision that's filled with compassion, love, connectedness and peace. And I do still believe together we can create and sing a love song for our planet. Together we can indeed experience amazing grace. I have played this arrangement of Amazing Grace in so many different countries and for many different audiences. Music can speak directly to the heart and soul of its listeners and it can go beyond any differences and bring us all closer together. The same energy exists in all life. It's in the sunsets, in the oceans, the mountains, birds, dolphins, stars, people, children, 
in all of us. Together, we can sing a love song for our planet. This is Orbit, my wonderful Pyrenean mountain dog, and he really loves to sing. Many times when I play my flutes, he joins in, and we compose a piece of music together. I feel it's really important to listen to the many other species with whom we inhabit this planet, and to feel the interconnectedness of all life. And if we communicate with them, we might discover some very deep, significant wisdom that can help all of us to create a better life on this planet. And also to show that at the same time, there is a lot of wonder and a lot of wonderful things happening. I... <sighs> Look, they're eating my coat. There's also a lot of wonder happening on this planet. No. Um, Angelo, it's not a good idea to eat that while I'm talking because people will laugh. And it looks yucky. Look at that. Angelo, you're a good boy. That's a good boy. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Angelo, stop this eating. See, even Amadeus is falling asleep in my spot.